Um, and, and everybody who knows about computers is very, very, very much painfully aware of the Conflicker uh, virus uh, that apparently has already affected many machines that are sitting there dormant. Problem is that they come to life on April Fools. And the worst part is I sent this to my office today saying, please watch all this stuff on April Fools and I get back, ha, 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 ha. Uh, you know, of all the days to choose, a lot of people don't realize that uh, come April Fools Day, uh, we could be in, a, in for a surprise. Um, 37 years. Um, we are a, a 501c3. I like to say we are a really a real nonprofit organization. You know, AARP is a nonprofit organization, and they have a budget like $5 billion or something like that, and uh, they have a growing population. Um, but PTI has it's been around for almost 37 years. We were formed by the National Association of Counties, uh, National League of Cities, uh, and the International City and County Managers Association. We get no financial support. So the way we are supported is through members like you. Doesn't it sound like public broadcasting? Um, cities and states are our members, so we call them jurisdictional members. So if you're interested, it goes by population. So some of you from some of the smaller counties, it wouldn't be that expensive, and then you're tied into our network of technology stuff that can be to the seven major areas. So it's a work in progress. And this reminds me of going back when I was once upon a time young as a, as a scout leader. And um, I was looking at all the tools the young scouts would have. I mean, each scout would come to a camping event with a bigger and larger knife or, or, or tool. And it's amazing to see what they had. And some of them had, you know, the knife, the fork, the spoon. Now, I have to tell you, from a practical standpoint, try eating with the knife, fork, and spoon coming out from both ends. It was extremely impractical, but very impressive looking at these as tools of choice. These are the things that our public is using increasingly in different ways. These are all your different things, and probably this picture is somewhat outdated. The point that I want to make here is this. Whoop, let me go back. Is this guy right here. This is a game changer. This is the Apple iPhone. It's not a great phone. It's a wonderful device. It does a changer. And as a result, this has enormous implications of how the public gets information. And 35% of the public is getting their news from even broadcast television. They're, it is a biohazard detector. Some of these new things uh, are being used either through the network to detect if a whole area goes out that tells them something or to the extent that it actually has stuff in some of them that can say in the military use that it can actually detect radiation uh, and other forms of, uh, of hazards. It is a smart card. This is the newest thing being used in Japan today where you swipe your phone over a machine and therefore your transportation thing is paid for. But this is getting uh, even more sophisticated. It's also a video LCD projector. It can either load it or actually project onto a small piece of paper, more so than your little screen. Medical record and monitoring, some people, there are now applications where you can load stuff, so that if something happens, just hand on the P and all your stuff is there for a rescue, a squad to see. Remote clicker, I mean, once you can do all these things, now these things have the infrared capability, or Bluetooth, depending upon what system, to be able to change things going on on your television, your LCD television. And then we have barcode reader, this is fascinating. You can now take a picture at a store, and it will tell you the price and whatnot, right there, because it can actually read. Uh, those barcodes. And then finally, are you ready? This Delta Airlines is now experimenting with uh, the uh, barcoding as a, as a boarding pass. So you'll just flash this over a little scanner and you get on the airplane without ever having to check in. Now this doesn't avoid the security lines, but at least gives you an idea. These are just some of them. Now the fun thing here is that there's um, one that uh, hasn't happened yet. Vanity mirror. Of all the things that hasn't occurred yet. My daughter, three years ago, said, Dad, how come you can't press a button and it just becomes an absolute glossy mirror so I can check to make sure there's nothing in my teeth or anything bad like that? So you'd think, I think, of just these are 47 things that either are being done or can be done. I bet you, uh, if we put our heads together, we could probably come up with at least another five or six. Whether we use them at all or all these things exist in any one device, it's like a Swiss Army knife. Can all things beat all? The answer is not necessarily. But this is what our public is seeing, trying, and using. And that's the reason why I point this out. Now, we're prepared. So this is a White House blog. It exists to this day where you're seeing daily updates and briefs and a, an attempt to gather people's opinions. There are other websites by the administration to capture information that will help the public see what's going on and to be able to report. This is the president. Uh, we'll see how well this works. Who said? Any of these new so-called earmarks are going to be posted 
and then you can weigh in on them. So it's really the administration is trying to get into transparency, which has been said for years, but this time, let's see if it works, because so far we're seeing things that are actually happening on the website that people can see and people can respond to. So it is a new, dramatically, this is not just about presidential, I mean, we can look as though that's the, that's the national administration. There's no reason why we can't think of how these things were used and how this might be valuable, either from a political standpoint or for a government outreach. And I'm addressing both. And then you have the social, social net way, and, and, and to the extent that we know how our constituents are using it, because you is now suddenly a community chat, start a discussion or comment. And when you do, automatically, one of these little uh, markers uh, will show up. So it helps you. So if you're looking at it, and you happen to live right here, you're going to be darn curious to know what that person in my neighborhood is saying. So suddenly, by using the cleverness of a map, and I see a point here, or here, and I have to be living near, I want to see what is being posted, because that's in my backyard. Now, I get crime, CNN, we have Fox Nation, both uh, are news enterprises that realize that they cannot exist just being a cable t uh, network that they've got to reach out. So when you see all these things going on in the political realm, they've got Twitter, they've got Facebook, they are totally interactive. Uh, with we have, everyone's now empowered with their smartphones. That's why I started with what people have. And everyone's encouraged by some localities. If you see a pothole or something wrong, take a picture of it and show us. So now people are running around there and saying, this trash, and there's a timestamp. It's still here, next day, it's still here. This refrigerator's not been picked up, it's still here. Here's a pothole, still here. And we really, as painful as it might, we actually want them to be active. We want them to be positively active. And if we empower them to send stuff back and in a creative way, that probably is a good thing. So anyone says, Alan, uh, I found some things for you that I know you would like. Now, in a sense, anybody who has, uh, uh, has uh, YouTube, um, Facebook, eBlogger, um, Dogball, something to this. The danger is that we're living in a world where we have this thing called viral video or viral anything, where somebody can concoct something and manipulate the public in ways that voices out there. Well, there's text messaging, which is really instant one-to-one. -one. If I want to reach my daughter or my son, I do a text, I get something back. Um, so that's one-to-one. -one. <laughs> but Twitter, I can't believe they're nearing 200 million users. 200 million users. So when I saw those numbers, I had to join. So I'm all tweets. And when you write something, you can't write more than 100 some odd, 150, less than 150 characters to make this, or I think it's like 147 or something to be precise. But less than 150 characters. So everything you write is going to be relatively short. But the ones that I'm seeing are actually very clever. They're already morphing into something very different. Is when they see something of interest, they are posting quick comment three, four, five words, and then a URL that will take you to a news article, something you read in a magazine of some kind, so that it's not just like, I woke up this morning and I realized, oh, hum, it's Monday. Some of it is incredibly boring. Some of it is, and counties across the United States are using this for outreach. When there is an emergency, they press one button, and that whole group gets notified. More people than I ever thought. And I was looking at them, and I realized that in 100 years, I will do a list, uh, read of all the good URLs, the kind of places to visit. We'll call it places to visit based on this presentation. Los Angeles Fire Department, this actually is a blog. They didn't pay any out if you go to ning.com, N-I-N-G.com. I'll put this in my little places to visit. I set this up in five minutes, and you might say, well, it looks it. But you can essentially set up a social network, it could be used as a blog, where you can sign up, uh, what, let me come back, where you can sign up, um, and, and it's an interesting article, and I'm not expecting you to read it here, but I will make a copy available. Uh, we see our role uh, as better connecting with our citizens, then we really have to figure out. So your next laptop or your next desktop, uh, you should look for in this auditorium. I mean, look at the seats. High 
and Second Life. There are 14 counties and 15 cities in there already, including the Florida.